Hey there. Hey there, folks. Um, and welcome to the Kickstarter Fireside chat. Thank you, Katalin, for the introduction. Uh, a live chat uh, Q&A. <laughs> Bear with us. This is live. So um, I myself, uh, here's Michael. Hi, Michael. Welcome. Um, hey. I myself, I'm a, I'm a game designer and CEO at No Moon uh, in the game industry for over 12 years, uh, both in AAA and indie. Game, game director at a new PC console studio that uh, we will announce uh, later next year called Play With Fire. And I'm currently working on My Night, the social deduction game that we have published three years ago and still updating. I'm also working on one project that we will have a Kickstarter campaign for later next year. And another secret early on project um, at the new studio that I just mentioned. So this Q&A will be between myself and Michael uh, that represents um, Outreach Games Department at Kickstarter, right, Michael? For over four That's years correct, or so. Yes. Uh, so yeah. let's uh, welcome him. And uh, I'm going to let you introduce yourself a little bit better, I guess. So there you go. Cool. Um, thanks for having me again. This is um, exciting um, to be back in Romania. I told my team, hey, don't bother uh, with anything from me. I'm off to Romania today um, to talk at DevPlay. I actually have two sessions, uh, one now with you, um, Francisc, and one later with the Women uh, in Games Initiative um, later tonight. And um, yeah, we are it's live yes but uh, actually um that's how life always was live so <laughs> nothing to worry about i would say yeah exactly so let's let's start off easy i guess you know by telling us a few things about yourself uh, you know who are you and how did you get in the how did you get in the game industry that's sort of like the most popular question right in our industry and how do you uh, and what do you do at uh, at kickstarter okay um, so um, my other life, I run a company called Booster Space. It's an event organization and consultancy um, agency based in Berlin. Uh, we just had Games Week Berlin uh, last week. And that's also how I got into the industry is uh, through events. So uh, when I was a student, I um, organized conferences, um, academic conferences on the philosophy of video games, mediality of the computer game and stuff like that. And um, we quickly decided um, that it doesn't make sense to stay in the silo of university. We wanted to connect with the industry. And as I was also part-time journalist working for a magazine um, on game development in Berlin, uh, I was the guy to connect the university with the industry, and that's how things uh, got rolling. Um, and of course, I played and still play uh, video games, which I think is a must uh, to survive in this industry. Wow, one hundred percent. So, and what do I do at Kickstarter? Sorry, the, <laughs> that's why I'm here. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, the title is Outreach Games Europe. Uh, it means I um, work with developers and creators, um, especially before they launch their campaign. Um, so I give feedback on the page, on the strategy, on the messaging, on the game itself. Does it make sense to go onto Kickstarter? Is the timing good? Um, do you have one feedback on, I don't know, whatever it is, it can be on the slogan, um, the subtitle, it can be on the video, it can be on the pledges, anything. But my work is first and foremost before the campaign launches. Um, I do that from Berlin, but I'm responsible for the whole of uh, Europe. And I do that since 2016. Nice. Thanks. So um i'm pretty sure like everyone knows what kickstarter is by now but just in case uh just in case there's someone out there that doesn't know what kickstarter is 100 percent, how would you describe super shortly kickstarter well it's kickstarter is the world's biggest uh, crowdfunding platform um it's important to uh, um, bear in mind that it's project and reward based system so um, it's not for equity funds, it's not for 
um, revenue share, it's not for anything. Um, it's only to bring creative ideas into life, into reality and um, support to make them happen. It also means you always have to give something back. Um, that's the reward structure. Even if it's only like a heart or the newsletter or the Discord um, server, whatever, you always need to give something back. It's not a donation. Um, so reward, the world's biggest reward and project-based crowdfunding platform. Yeah, sweet. Cool. Well, let's get into the, the nitty gritty details. Let's say I have some, I have some really particular specific questions around Kickstarter and, you know, this is that play Eastern European conference, Romania, and there is no question that in Eastern Europe including Romania, there is no shortage of developers and potential new Kickstarter creators, right? But there is a shortage of investors. That's why Kickstarter is really a really good opportunity for indie developers around this um, this particular space. And mm -hmm. only, only from what I know, uh, only Poland and Slovenia are eligible countries on Kickstarter from the Eastern Bloc, making other countries in Romania have a difficult time whenever they would like to reach out and build a community of backers through Kickstarter. And just to give only some, some successful examples, um, Gibbous, a tool adventure, which you probably know, which has released, uh, by the way, recently on Switch, um, had to go through a Switzerland um, subsidiary in order to create a campaign. Unbound, um, again, another one had to go through UK and an indie game marketing agency to create their campaign. And last but not least, Too Fat to Fly, a small but successful board game company uh, in Romania, had to go through the US and a collaborator from there, among other third parties like Backer Kid and Crowdhawks or other stuff like that, to make to make all of their free campaigns. So that being said, what is Kickstarter's plan to open? The platform to more creators specifically more indie developers from eastern europe uh, europe and romania and what are some of the challenges that doesn't let you expand the list of eligible countries and how we maybe the game dev community can help uh this to to happen mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, uh, as you correctly said um, we are fully aware of the creative um, energy coming out of romania and we see all of these projects you just mentioned um, as um, um, sort of indicators that there's something going on there and that we should have a closer eye on the market. That's also one of the reasons why I went uh, to uh, DevPlay last year um, to um, build up a network, uh, check out what's going on and better understand the market. Cool, just moving on. So. Right now, we're all going through some difficult times. Um, that, what, that's also why we're doing this online, right? And unfortunately, we're not in a physical space. Uh, but games in general have seen an increase in users, an increase in revenue, and an increase in interest across all platforms and genres in the last year until, you know, since the pandemic sort of like hit us, perhaps with a few exceptions. How was Kickstarter affected by this? Did you see an increase in the number of backers during this period of time? Is this a good period of time to launch a campaign or not? How do you see that? Mm -hmm. um, so in March, um, April, May, when the sort of global impact of the pandemic um, started, um, Kickstarter was hit very bad very badly. Um, our backing, back care numbers, our launch project numbers and the USDs go, um, being backed on Kickstarter or the monies being backed on Kickstarter went down, I think 30% or something. So it was a harsh uh, decrease. Um, games actually then came to the rescue. Um, absurdly, we had two of the biggest, um, like Frosthaven, for example, uh, two of the biggest game projects um, being launched during the or being funded during the pandemic. Um, and that um, actually gave a bit of a shift in the overall uh, platform structure that um, games and design and technology are more than ever the main drivers 
whereas design and technology was hidden um, a bit harder because most of them produced in China and China was obviously stalled for a couple of months. So long story short, um, yes, we were hit, um, but games, as you mentioned, uh, were sort of a savior for um, also sanity of human minds uh, during the pandemic. We could have fun <laughs> while staying at home. And we saw that also happening on, on Kickstarter. Is it a good time to launch now? Now it's more or less back to normal. Um, people got used to the pandemic. It's there to stay and um, you just work around it. Um, so now it's like similar as it would have been last year. And do you do you predict anything major happening in the in the next year as well due to this situation, such as maybe you know you've seen a decrease as you said in March and April, and maybe again an increasing an increase again, so like just leveled up to the normal levels, I guess. Um, do you foresee because of the global sort of like economical sort of like challenges that we're going to go through most likely um as people i'm not talking here about the game industry necessarily um generally speaking as consumers do you foresee or do you guys at kickstarter foresee a decrease in you know backers because of that or not yeah right sorry i forgot to answer that um not really in overall yes um, Kickstarter globally, yes. Um, Kickstarter games, not really. Um, that said, we see an overall increase of the success rate, which means um, let fewer campaigns are launched, but the 100% um, funding goal is reached more regularly. Mm. We also see um, less backers um, pour in more money. Um, so as the success rate is higher and as there's um, like um, clear community work um, going out, people really understand the platform better and better. Um, we see um, overall pledge volume increasing, increasing, but the number of backers, people backing is slightly um, shrinking or staying stable. Got it. Thanks. Cool. So um, let's go even deeper down the rabbit hole of Kickstarter. Uh, whenever a developer wants to launch a Kickstarter, generally speaking, a, a, a campaign, um, what is the what is the best time during a year to do that from mm -hmm. your data? Yeah. So generally speaking, the best time to launch is when your community is ready. Uh, of course, also the project pipeline needs to be in, in time, um, but better shift the date um, according to when you feel your community is hot, they want to go with you on the journey of crowdfunding, um, rather than say, I said it's October because Kickstarter data shows October is good and we want to launch in October. No, don't do that. Uh, I've seen successful campaigns in December and January which are the um, um, smallest months, um, to say, so to say. Um, but if your community and your project and your timeline is fit for December and January, go um, first. Um, second, um, yes, data shows December, January, no. Um, it's uh, the weakest months. Um, the rest is more or less stable. Um, it depends, like August is a bit stronger or September is a bit stronger than August, um, but the difference is my, minor. It's only December and January, which are strange. But again, if your community is ready, go. Well, let's, let's funnel down on that then. What do you, how do you define when a community is ready? When, mm -hmm. when you have numbers, when you have a specific KPI or what do you what do you mm -hmm. see there? Yeah, you know, um, so um, first, just as a general recommendation, please reach out to us um, as you are from Europe, uh, me um, first um, and early. I can't help you if it's like launching today or last like tomorrow. I can only help you if um, I have also two weeks headspace or ideally two years headspace um, to work together with you. 
Um, when is the community ready? Is best situation is the community asks for it. That's a luxury problem, uh, but we see that especially in video games a lot. Um, you do your community work and then suddenly they say, hey, um, how about running a Kickstarter? Or when are you finally launching um, your early access? And then you go out and say, um, okay, I'm planning a Kickstarter. Um, you need numbers um, also. You need a critical mass. The conversion rate before you ask is there's no rule to that. It's super variable between 0.5% to 20%. It completely depends on also the style of your followership and whatever. Uh, we can go deeper into that if we work on a specific campaign. Um, but you need to bring in roughly 50% of the backers directly through your channels. So what you should do is make a calculation um, of how many, many backers, not how many euros, how many backers do you need to fund your game? Um, then you divide that by two, and then you know the number of people you ideally bring to your uh, through your channels. You again divide that by two. That's the people you need to have on day uh, one. So 25% um, of the overall number of people you want to have the feeling that they really are ready for your campaign um, and that they are like they know the dates and they really want to make this happen together with you. Um, that's the, the KPI sort of. Got it. Fair enough. So is it is it better to show off like to let's just say I'm going through a game which is not necessarily the type of game that would go in a in an early access or it wouldn't necessarily be compatible in building a huge community around it. But you know, Twitter, games marketing, you're doing something, you're gathering a community on Discord or whatever, whatever social platform that developer uses. Um, but you also get organic reach. You also get organic reach through whatever um, whatever ads you would do as a developer or through Kickstarter, I guess. And towards that audience, is it better to show off a good trailer of a game or to give them a good demo from your experience or from what you have seen? Or is it, mm -hmm. you know, pants from the game to game, of course, but what, what do you have on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there's two answers to that question. Um, A, the video is the most important thing. Um, the title of the game, like what you use in the title of the project, the subline, which you use for describing the project, plus the video, including obviously the, the key visual. Um, that's what people see on within the first two seconds. That's the most important. Um, then the video should focus, like it should be a trailer, same, similar as you would put it on Steam. Um, focusing on gameplay, this is the game you were waiting for your whole life, sort of um, storyline. Um, that said, it needs to have in-game footage. You also need to have GIFs on your uh, campaign page with in-game materials. Uh, you need to have screenshots. So you have at least a vertical slice running, uh, which you can also potentially send as a demo to influencers or to um, friends and press and media, or to backers who ask for it. Um, because you need to prove that you can deliver what you're promising and that it will look similarly awesome as you are promoting it to look like. Um, do you need to have a demo out on the market? I wouldn't say um, yes, but I also wouldn't say no. That's um, super individual. Some campaigns work completely with their demos to market it. I personally don't really recommend it because it, especially in smaller titles, it takes away a bit of the excitement, um, but open to discussions. Got it. And Related to the Kickstarter video, um, as I said, I am working on a Kickstarter campaign and we're planning a video that will have mostly gameplay, but as a user, as a consumer, as a backer, I always mm -hmm. tend to 
back projects on Kickstarter that also have the courage, the developers have the courage to show their face, speak in some sort of a pseudo interview style. And I feel that being a little bit more personal makes me be more connected with that developer and I have greater chances to actually back that project. So um, there's a lot of debate here from at least for my Kickstarter circles, so to speak, when a lot of people advise us to say, you know, just just show a lot of gameplay. Don't show your face. Don't talk a lot about the game. And I feel like it should be kind of a mix of that. What do you, what do you think? What do you see as a p- pattern uh, around this? Or what do you advise yeah. there? So, yes, um, you win the bet. Um, it's um, about the faces, it's about the people behind the project. That's why people go on Kickstarter. Else I could wait for Steam Summer Sale, right? If it's only for the bargain of a cool game, pff, I don't need to use Kickstarter for that. I use Kickstarter as a backer and as community member because I enable people to fulfill something. Uh, not only through money, also f- through feedback, through communication support, through community work. Um, so, but um, it needs to have gameplay. And I would recommend, because it's gamers at the end, and gamers like to see game, um, that you do the first 20 to 40 seconds gameplay. Then you p- pull out the talking heads. Ideally, you show also studio or you show the full whole team. Not everybody needs to talk, right? But we want to see who's behind the um, development. And um, then go deeper into also the gameplay idea, which is a unique opportunity that Kickstarter provides. On Steam, nobody will really look into a dev interview why you chose to um, do this to- um, rule set as you as you finally did it. But on Kickstarter, that's an awesome opportunity to explain yourself as a creator why you are doing the game as you are doing it. And um, that's a, um, a high factor for people supporting you on Kickstarter. Got it. I see that Katalin is uh, is about to go to the door. Probably I joined, we're I joined the party. <laughs> <laughs> we have a know. couple of questions from the audience. Um, but yeah, okay. just, did you have other questions for uh, for Michael? Uh, yeah, I had two more questions, but uh, they can wait for now, I guess. Or uh, the way you want to do it, we can do it however okay. you want. Let's let's go through your questions, uh, and uh, sure. I'll and then we can take the the questions from the audience. Um, sure. Let's just be mindful of time. We have about ten minutes left total. Great. Okay. Cool. So yeah, two quick other questions. Last questions. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the rewards. So for indie game developers, um, a lot of indie game developers, they really jump immediately to do the greatest and most, um, let's say, consistent campaign. And they always try to do a lot of physical rewards or hard digital rewards. Um, what would you advise around that? Um, do game developers should have more physical rewards or more digital rewards? What do you, what do you think about mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Um, so first thing, you need to have a track record of successful campaigns or whatever successful projects launched. The more your success you have in your career, the easier it is to follow up on success and to have a second, third and fourth project uh, being successful, not only for Kickstarter, but also for publishing. So don't do the um, MMORPG you always were waiting for with uh, endless open worlds and whatever, and you never finish. Um, Have something small, precise, which you can actually fulfill with the resources you have in due time. Uh, And this rule applies also to the Kickstarter. Um, Do something in the campaigns you can easily fulfill. If your brother has a printing shop um, and he can send out posters, yes, for sure. But if you need to uh, do research on physical goods, you need to find out where to do whatever. Uh, You need to, um, the first time, figure out um, what's it called? Um, Tolls. Um, how they work in the international spheres. You might have backers from Indonesia, for example. What do you do if the Indonesian guy wants to have a poster 
uh, plus a T-shirt and uh, the Steam key. Then you suddenly need to spend 50 euros or whatever to send over a poster there. It's not worth it. So um, focus on the digital first. Um, video games can work um, exclusively with digital rewards. If you want to do a physical, do them super expensive collector's editions, 100, 200, 300, 1,000 euros, something like that, where then the overhead is actually worth it. But uh, small margin physical stuff, I wouldn't recommend. Got it. Thanks. Last question. So you already mentioned that a lot of people should contact you as soon as possible. As soon as they know they want to do a Kickstarter campaign, they should just sign up, do their page, even if it's in a draft um, draft mode, and they you should be there for them and give them feedback as early as possible. What does mm -hmm. it take that point until the campaign is um, launched? What does it take to get featured on Kickstarter as a game and get some even some social media shares from you guys and attention through your channels? How do you decide the, the projects that we love that you love as the tag? Mm -hmm. um, there's no rule to that. Um, and it's also a secret. Um, we ne never promise um, features. Um, that's not how we work. Uh, also, we don't sell them. Um, the thing is, the more intense and the better we work together as people, the higher the chances are to get featured. The rest is magic. Got it. Okay, well, thanks. Let's get to, then to the, um, to the audience questions, Kathleen. Yeah, so we have a couple. So what, you know, first one, um, I think it's been touched upon, but um, it, it doesn't hurt to summarize. So what are the most common features of very successful Kickstarter campaigns? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, thanks, Daniel, for asking. I have the Pioneer open in parallel. Um, the first important thing is Kickstarter is, um, or the Kickstarter community is very visual. So you need to have awesome artwork. Um, your key visual needs to be very attractive and shareable. Um, you can take it as an, as an indicator of your imager uh, or imgur, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, posts work well and are being shared and liked. Then you know you're on the right track with your artwork. Um, so the title, subtitle, key visual and the video. Those are the um, four main uh, uh, core factors. Then um, niche, focus on a niche target group, which is likely to support you um, as a community. Um, all the successful indie studios we see on Kickstarter bring in their friends, fools and family from day one, and then they work. Um, what doesn't work at all is say, I do a Kickstarter and hope for the best. You need to do your homework and your community building before. Very, very true. Uh, and the second question is, uh, and that's, uh, I'm very curious about this myself. So are there any examples of uh, successful mobile games on Kickstarter? <laughs> uh, I guess if you give me two hours research, uh, two days research time, I might find some. Um, mobile does not really work on Kickstarter for two simple or three simple reasons. One, the app stores. It's super hard to share keys. Um, they are not made for that. Uh, Steam, easy. You just create a list of a thousand keys, you send them out, done. Second, the price tag. Um, one euro average game price or two or if it's super deluxe version 10 euros so if you want 10,000 euros you need 10,000 backers super high number very challenging to achieve third reason is most mobile games are free to play i mentioned in the very beginning it's reward and project based now underlining the reward what do you give as rewards for a free to play game very difficult to design and very difficult to communi communicate to the community. So short answer, um, no. Oh, okay, that settles it. Uh, <laughs> if you have mobile games, 
Kickstarter is arguably not the best way to fund, uh, to fund production. So, um, Michael and Francisk, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, I think that was a great discussion. Um, you guys are already very well connected to, to Pine and Discord, so uh, I think uh, developers may reach out to you uh, to, to ask additional questions throughout the event. Uh, and I will let you enjoy the, the, you know, everything else that goes on. Please cast your votes for the best indie game as well, uh, while, while you're at it. Okay. And uh, no, I'll see you around the, the event. And Michael, see you later on the uh, Women in Games panel.